Hey everyone, Hybrid Toy Reviews here, bringing you a new video concept for the channel. I dabbled with it a little bit back, but I think we're going to start rolling with it. I'm calling this Topical Tuesday. It is where, on Tuesday, I just pick a topic and talk about it for five to ten minutes about. And I figured, what better topic than the very recently completed Black Series Gaming Greats Republic Commando Delta Squad. And I gotta say... This whole arrangement with these four worked out very, very well. Um, uh, Boss here. Boss was the first one to be released. And he was he was first announced in, like, September of 2021. And come around February of 22, he was in stores. Scorch is the newest release member of the team. And he just came out the end of February, beginning of March of 2023. So... Within a year, a year and two weeks, we got the entire team of four. That is way better than, like, the four years it took Hasbro to give us the entire team of six for Ghost Team, or for Ghost Squadron in Star Wars Rebels. Um, I mean, they very quickly pumped these out. And I gotta say, for what they are, they were very, very well done. These are reuse of the Black Series Hunter body from the Bad Batch. Um, he wears commando armor, but he has a slightly slimmer build, and that's probably an animation aesthetic more than a what it would be like in live action um i also believe i have a, a strong opinion that a lot of armored video game characters in the late 90s early 2000s were really done very bulky in a way that like if they were in a live action movie or show they probably would have had less bulky costumes just because of practicality so because these are reused from the Hunter body, they caught a lot of flack right off rip because they're not super big, bulky. You know, they're my 2003 video game characters aren't big, bulky like Master Chief. They're bulky like a normal, not like a normal, uh, you know, uh, Clone Wars commando. But the thing is, is because Delta Squad showed up in Clone Wars, it kind of does match that depiction better. These don't perfectly represent, you know, your video game versions of the characters. They are a damn close fill-in, but I mean, these really well match their Clone Wars interpretations. They're a little bit of a stylistic take, and as I saw, there was an interview with Eric from the uh, Black Series team. I believe this is where this came from. It was with Luke Ness Monster on his channel. You should check it out. He's done two with him now, I believe, and uh, very fun videos there. Um, where they said, you know, like, the option was use the Hunter body for a Republic Commando or don't have a Republic Commando. And, like, that's very much the truth. I mean, for something that is so close, they're going to reuse. For characters that are so niche, that have not been relevant in nearly 20 years, except Scorch has now shown up in voiceless cameo in the Bad Batch twice now in the last year. But, I mean, these characters came across very good, I gotta say. I mean, just looking at hunter here or not hunter i'm sorry at boss here he just he recreates the character very nicely they started with him and that gave me some nervousness because i was like you know if if they're gonna stop making them at least we got boss that's what they did with the clone wars line um the 3.75 line back in like i think it was 2011 or 12 we got a clone wars animated style boss figure and none of the other teammates it was really weird um and it was a cool figure, but, like, it was definitely lacking without his teammates. But, you see, they've done very good here. He's mostly clean. He's got some paint scuffs on the orange area. And they've done a little bit of weathering on his knee pad and thigh there and abdomen under the blaster. Very light, very standard Hasbro stuff there. And I feel like it does a great job of representing the character at the price point. Um, I think these figures all could potentially benefit from having just a very light wash. None of them just really bring out some of those molded lines. But as far as things that you could ask for, I mean, Boss was done very well, and it's a nice representation. Another thing I really like with these is the shiny blue paint effect they've done here. They catch the light. I mean, it looks great. It doesn't exactly look illuminated like they do in the games, but it catches the light in a very aesthetically pleasing way. It does make me rather very happy. Um, the second one to come out was Sev here. Now, he's probably the one 
that is the most different from his video game appearance. Um, he is missing some different, there was like a little like shoulder pad, you know, like a little ammo thing up there. And, um, there was just some detraction from him, I will say. Um, but honestly, he's one that I do really like. He's probably my second favorite out of the team here in Hasbro Black Series depiction. Um, he just came out really good. I like the dark red paint. I mean, it looks very sloppily hand done, just like he would do. A lot of people were concerned when these were coming out that we wouldn't get any of the variations of the blaster because in the Republic Commando game, there were attachments you could put on that commando blaster to, you know, make it, you know, do different functions like sniping or grenade launching. And with Sev being a sniper, you would want him to have a sniper attachment instead of just a normal blaster. And a lot of people were like, Hasbro's going to cut corners and just reuse the same blaster like they used the hunter body. But as you see here, he has the sniper attachment. And it looks really good. And he's really fun to put in sniper poses. This hunter body has some phenomenal articulation. And he can hit pretty well any sniper pose you want. Maybe like a kneeling pose or a laying pose. There's some good articulation to be had here. And very similar to Boss. He has some just little scuff marks here and there. Just very thinly spread throughout the figure. A little bit on the chest there. I mean, just enough to make him look not brand new. But there's definitely enough cleanness going on that he still does kind of look brand new. The third one to come out, and definitely the, I think the least exciting, personally, is Fixer here. Um, Fixer's a solid character. I mean, I like him in the game. But I think it's hard for a lot of people to call him the favorite commando. He's kind of just there. He's like the tech of the team. You know, he has his moments, but he very rarely steals the show. Um, something that caught a lot of people's eye right off rip is they missed a big piece of paint here on the upper chest. The green is supposed to continue up and then like come back over like basically a trapezoid kind of shaped wedge. Um, and they did overlook doing that. Um, which does suck. Um, it doesn't ruin the figure for me, but he's, I mean, just by that omission, accepting that these are stylized, accepting that they're going to look like Clone Wars, not video game, that is still a decently glaring omission and does knock a few points off the figure. Otherwise, he does come with a retool of the helmet, giving him his little antenna on the side. He was the first one to come with a variant of the backpack, having that kind of like rig antenna thing up top. And all around, it did turn out very good. Um, and then similar to the other figures, you know, he has a little bit of scuff weathering going on here. And a little bit of white coming through the green paint on the inner thigh. And uh, he also came just with the standard commando blaster. So we saw that return after being used with Boss. And then, coming to what we have as our most recent and final edition. We've got Scorch, and man, does Scorch deliver. He comes with the grenade launcher attachment of the commando of the commando blaster, and it actually has some nice paint on it, some gray and then like a light gray, almost white up on the top. It's the only commando blaster with paint on it. He has a very large, bulky backpack in the game, recreated well, and he features a thigh-mounted strap with canisters, and they actually did make that piece that goes on here. I mean, they gave a little rubber overlay, and it worked out very well. Um, he then also has the kind of standard scuff weathering going on and underneath. He just has a lot of paint. I'd argue that he has more paint in his design probably than any of the other team members by maybe a small margin, but I feel like there was more going on here. So he had a lot less white than the other team members do. Um, that same blue translucent -y visor effect looking very nice. Just very eye-catching, and he just looks cool. I mean, these guys all look cool, I gotta say. Um, I'm very happy with how the entire team came out. But then, just because they spoiled us, we did end up with an additional Republic Commando figure. We're not going to talk on this one too terribly much, because it's probably the least exciting, but it is cool they got acknowledgement. It came out at the same time as Scorch, the Republic Commando B-1 Battle Droid. He looks excellent. Uh, just a gray battle droid with a lot of just orange scuffing all over him, and the white around the eyes. He looks very sinister, and uh, just a very well-done battle droid, and probably my favorite repaint on these battle droids. Sorry, had to shoo away Ood. He's causing problems. But yeah, 
This battle droid is a very well done figure and one of my favorite battle droids they've done in the line so far. So all in all, I feel like they've done some very good coverage for the Republic Commando games. Um, if I have to rank these guys, I feel like it wouldn't be very hard. My absolute favorite is Scorch. It might be a newness thing, but I feel like there's just a lot of good work put into that figure to make him a very nice representation. My least favorite is going to be Fixer. I gotta say, Fixer is a fine figure, and one that I'm happy to own. Sorry about that. But even though I'm happy to own him, it doesn't fix that glaring inaccuracy on his chest. And he's just a not very... I mean, he's a solid design, but... You know, between him being inaccurate to the game design and then not being anything, like, super special feeling, it just doesn't really speak to me in the same way that a lot of the other designs do. My second favorite is going to be Sev. I know I said he's a bigger deviation from the game model than most, but he just looks cool, and I've had so much fun posing Sev. Such a fun figure. Um, I understand a lot of people are disappointed in him, but I'm very happy with him personally, and I think he earns that second best, you know, position. And then Boss is in third best, not for any bad reason. He is a solid figure, and one that I'm very happy I picked up because I've just recently learned that he is blown up on the secondary market because now the team's complete. Um, so good luck getting him for under 50 bucks right now, it looks like, and it's probably going to go up. Um, the rest of these are available at stores now. But Boss is just... He's simple. His design is simple, but it was recreated good from... It was recreated well by Hasbro, whereas they did the paint defect with Fixer. Uh, otherwise, they would almost be interchangeable in that final position. These two just have the cooler designs, I gotta say. Um, I've had a lot of fun with these guys. Um, I hope that if you guys have picked up the team, you'll have a lot of fun with them. And yeah, that's it for now. So... Off the topic of the Commandos, but just talking about the future of this little series. Um, if you have any ideas about just something that would make a fun little 5-10 minute video, I know we're going on 12 now, an, a short video, you know, something Black Series related, um, you know, it could be about direct figures, it could be about behind the scenes stuff. If you think you have a topic that would be a good one to talk about in a future Topical Tuesday, please leave it in the comments down below. I will absolutely give you a shout out when that video comes out and uh, if it's an idea I use, and that's kind of where we're at. Next week, if things go right, and it looks like it will, the schedule's lined up good, Topical Tuesday will actually be live, so it's not going to be that 5-10 to ten minute format. I don't know it's going to be a super long thing. I'm, in my mind, I'm saying a half hour, 45 minutes, but it depends on how long it goes. And I'm actually going to have Tommy from the 1313 podcast on as a guest for it, and we are going to just talk about the general topic of what's Hasbro doing like with their some of these figure choices that are coming out and with the crazy delays with certain things and a little bit of that got talked about today well for me today Sunday when I'm recording this um, I was on out of the basement we talked about a little bit of that but Tommy and I have a lot of thoughts on stuff that we just want to vocalize so uh, next Tuesday keep an eye out it'll be at about 7.30 at night, and follow my Instagram. You'll see where I'm posting about that leading up to. So that's it for now. Thank you guys a bunch for watching. It means a lot that you did, and leave any ideas in the comments below or just your opinions on these figures. I'll catch you all on the next video. Until then, may the Force be with each and every one of you. Bye. <laughs>